Hi, how are you guys doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live, and I'm here with a very special guest. It is Paul, the CEO of Nextleaf Solutions, Symbol Oils. How are you doing today, Paul? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Great. How are you enjoying the conference so far? You know, it's a good show. This is always uh, for us. Obviously, we're a Vancouver-based company, so we like to have a presence at the show. Uh, for, uh, for a company in the B2B space, it's always great for uh, driving commercial relationships and, and uh, you know, seeing, seeing folks that uh, you know, everyone's so busy, so you, you get to see them a couple of times a year and, and you know, always, always great opportunities to, to keep growing the business and, and uh, you know, looking for new business opportunities with uh, brands and, and cultivators you know, who are looking for, for opportunities to, to uh, outsource a you know, difficult part of their business. And, and uh, so, you know, always a great show for us on the commercial side. Fantastic. Now, 2020 is starting off great with this conference. 2019 was an up in the beginning and then very down year. Now, what makes Nextleaf Solutions unique? There's like 440 companies that exist in the cannabis sector publicly. What makes you guys special? What, what is exactly that you do that makes you guys unique? We're a company that became the first uh, publicly traded company to have multiple issued patents around industrial scale extraction and purification of cannabinoids. And been a company that has been very successful in acquiring and in developing intellectual property around the production of uh, standardized THC and CBD molecules. We've developed 11 issued patents over the last year and, wow. and we've got a licensed processing facility uh, 45 minutes east of Vancouver. Uh, our business model is, is, is built on taking low-grade dried cannabis that obviously did a lot of that in the industry. There's yes. over 400 tons right now sitting in vaults. Uh, across Canada and, and, and our business model is taking that lower grade material, turning it into a high purity distillate refined oil that uh, can then be, be put into products, beverages, edibles, vape pens, uh, and, and, and really more importantly can be it can actually you know sit in in inventory as an oil for 10 years well you know a herbal form is uh, is is only going to you know be good for 6 months so as as Canada's kind of slow to roll out we're really uh, uh, position well, I think, as are other extractors here in Canada, because there's a lot of material to process, and, and you know that's going to need to be turned into oil, regardless of kind of how slow the the retail uh, rolls out here in Canada, in Ontario, and in these provinces that uh, I think have been pretty slow. So, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, great time, I think, and, and really what makes us unique is our focus on not just our our, our uh, extraction business, but really developing intellectual property that we think. Uh, becomes very valuable as you know, big pharma, big alcohol, big tobacco. These large players get into the space. I mean, these are companies. They don't care about about farmers, yeah. right? They care about about uh, you know intellectual property around the standardization of, of CBD and THC based products that can be sold in Canada and, and other uh, markets that are federally legal. So that's really where our focus is, and we we think that uh, you know we've done uh, uh, over the last three years. We've taken a very focused approach. We've been uh, focus on, on kind of one part of the supply chain and, and uh, we think that's how great businesses are built. Very good. Now, uh, our community of investors is in about 60 countries and they love to learn about undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies. I think you fall in that category. What would you tell an investor that is doing some research and interested in investing in your company? Uh, and I think you know, first and foremost, I would say look at relative investments and look at a company's market cap. And, and uh, you know, uh, when I like to invest, uh, I like to look for 10 baggers myself. And Absolutely. And, and, we all like 10 baggers. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, if uh, if you talked to me a year and a half ago, I would have told you that uh, I, I wasn't long any cultivators. And what I would have told you uh, is that I was I was, I was long on, on, on companies. Uh, we obviously weren't publicly traded at the time. But, you know, guys that are in the same space as us, and if you look back now over the last year, uh, I think you know that's been validated by how how, how how extractors have done relative to the sure. companies that have tried to you know do it all. But I think most importantly, when you look at a, you know a company like Canopy Growth, let's use them, they're you know the biggest company in the world. Yep. You look at uh, you know recently they came out and they talked about their 150 issued patents, and and what I would say you know first and foremost before you even unpack the value of what those patents even cover. I'd say, you know, you, you want to say, okay, you, you look at what those patents are worth on a, on a per patent basis relative to market cap, and you look at a company like, like Nextleaf, we've got 11 issued patents around uh, nice. high throughput uh, extraction purification. And we think that you know if you value those patents on a patent for patent basis, and you look at what our market cap is versus 
uh, you know, the biggest player in the space that has arguably the largest patent portfolio. We think that uh, we're number two and, and, uh, and, and that's a, a big focus for us because we think at the end of the day, uh, investors that, uh, that are long oils, I think believe in the value of our patent portfolio and we say, uh, you know, our, our commercialization of that, that's, that, that part of the business is free. And uh, you know, if you check back with us in, in a year, I think what you're going to see is that we've we've done a great job a year from now, uh, over 2020, monetizing our IP through through licensing our patents. We recently licensed uh, two of our non-core patents. Perfect. We're into revenue already. Uh, we're excited to to put that out to the markets here uh, very shortly. Um, but also, we monetize our IP through through uh, extraction services, toll processing, and, and selling molecules. So I think that you know that's the that's the you know the first thing I always say you know. For guys that are that are looking for 10 X's, you look at uh, you look at you know uh, who is going to be valuable to big tobacco, big alcohol. You know, the last company I was with was acquired. Uh, by Kronos, so that okay. also has been uh, has, has taken a major investment from Altria, and I, wow. I say this I say this every single day. You know, who does who does an Altria Constellation and Imperial? I mean, they've they've three of those companies have made investments in this space, and and I think you're going to continue to see tobacco, alcohol, pharma, big CPG, and again, uh, you know, we we really believe that you know IP is a core part of our strategy because that, we think that's how we create a billion dollar business uh, for shareholders um, wow. as as this industry evolves from kind of you know. A, what has been a, an illicit industry, and now what is you know uh, being commercialized you know in in year two to where we think things are going to be ten years from now, five years from now, as as you know large uh, transnational companies get into it. Absolutely. Now you guys have a relationship with Bevcana. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys are doing with them? Yeah, you know Bevcana is I think a, a, a perfect example of the types of companies that we like to work with on the downstream. So we kind of have an up, upstream that's the, the the farmers, the growers, uh, you know the guys growing biomass that they need to have turned into oil. The downstream is is, is companies like Bav Canada, uh, guys that are manufacturing edibles, beverages, uh, you know, products that that you know they know how to manufacture already, and they have uh, you know a good understanding of you know consumer packaged goods. That's not what we do. We sell uh, standardized molecules. So really, uh, we love Bav Canada because it's it's uh, uh, molecules THC and CBD, uh, highly purified, come out of Next Leaf's uh, patented. Uh, extraction distillation plant, and then it, it powers BevCanna's uh, products. We think they're going to be one of the the largest uh, beverage players in Canada. We think again, uh, you know, that's a that's a segment. Obviously, Canopy is very focused on that because yeah. of the the Constellation brands relationship. And we think, uh, you know, over the long term, we we think beverage is really exciting. So for us, uh, we got a we got some uh, technology uh, that we acquired recently that allows uh, the the onset time to be sped up from about an hour and a half to two hours for me when I take a uh, traditional kind of beverage or edible to uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Wow, okay. And, and so for us, we think the value in that IP, uh, you know, has a, is going to be tremendously valuable moving forward to, to companies like BevCanna and, and other uh, beverage players that are, are looking for, uh, you know, highly purified molecules that are uh, emulsified and ready to go and be added to, to, to their beverage products. Fantastic. Now, what can investors expect for next leaf oils in 2020 i think what what you're going to see in 2020 you're going to you're going to see a few more licensing deals where we um, generate uh, royalty fees from our non-core ip but we're what what i think what we're most excited to unveil is some of our partners on the downstream products so uh, you know, companies that are that are uh, existing manufacturers of food products that uh, you know now are are are, are bringing their their uh, infused edible line um, to market we're very excited to to start uh, making those announcements and then also our program for for cultivators and large-scale outdoor cannabis farmers we think that uh, the outdoor uh, legalization of uh, uh, cannabis is, has really uh, changed the game and we're really excited to to start uh, announcing uh, some of those relationships as well and, you know we think it's a it's a great it's a great year i um, mean obviously medifarm labs and valens have both done a great job to to, to to really validate the model i mean yep. i remember uh, you know two years ago uh, you know biggest lps in the in the space said there's no 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 there's, there's no market for for what you guys are setting up and you know we're going to do it all ourselves but i think what what really uh, labs and and, and valens have done is they've, they've demonstrated there's a lot of billion dollar companies that said you know what this is this is quite 
you know, isn't as, as easy as buying equipment and setting it up. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they're starting to focus on kind of what they do, and 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 we think that there's a lot of value in, in companies that focus and and again continue to to, to push the science and, and get and get uh, and uh, get more efficient when it comes to what's their cost per molecule of that oil. So that's I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, like everybody was vertically integrated, vertically integrated. Everyone wants to be vertically integrated. Everyone wants to get their hands involved in everything. And why not just become an expert in one thing? Hey, you know, I say this every day. Balance is shown and labs is shown and you guys are showing that if you become, an, and Bev Canada too, if you become an expert in one thing, you have a chance. But if you're trying to be jack of all trades, master of none, is that not what we're seeing? An entire sector of companies that have blown through, in some cases, billions of dollars. Billions, yeah. Canopy growth is burning through 300 million a quarter. Uh, Aurora Cannabis last quarter burned through $88 million. It's crazy. Well, and, and this is a scary thing too, because you look at some of these balance sheets. So what's on the balance sheet? You got facilities, you know, but you got facilities that, quite frankly, you wouldn't build today. Because a company like Nextleaf, all we care about is how many THC and CBD molecules are in that biomass. You know, you know we'd love that biomass to be grown outdoors because it's, it's going to be a lower cost per molecule for us. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of these indoor cultivation facilities that, quite frankly, you're going to at some point you're going to shut off the lights because you're going to say, well, you're going to grow this outdoors in a field once per year. You're going to process of that into oil. Um, but the other thing, you know, the goodwill, the uh, uh, biological assets, you're going you're to continue to see write downs of that. And, and, totally. And I think in some ways that's that's going to be uh, that's going to overhang the sector, but. The one thing that we know is that uh, Canada is the first developed country in the world to legalize the most popular illicit drug globally, and, and uh, there's going to be a lot of winners over the long term. Of course. And, and there's going to be companies that uh, you know you and I are going to be laughing, chuckling about in five years from now and saying, "Holy smokes!" I mean, guys, guys literally blew through billions, you know, billions of dollars, <laughs> and, 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 and billions. you know shut off the lights, and, and you know guys bought the assets for for pennies of the dollar, and, and uh, you know it's it's. In some ways, it's sad, but I but I also think you know you look at other industries. Coke and Pepsi don't grow sugar cane and process it, and and, and That's right. you know they do one thing. They 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 in some cases don't even bottle you know you know their 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 uh, formulation and their brand, right? And and it's going to be the same thing in this industry. So let me ask you a question. You're the CEO. So if the right company came to the to the table and offered you X amount of dollars, would you sell this business? Listen. Every single day, we will do what's in the, the best interest of the shareholders. That's who I work for. You know, my family and I are, are the biggest uh, shareholders of this company, and and, and you know, uh, uh, you know, we got a lot of pride. Our management team, our board, we got a lot of pride. We're we're in this to build a billion dollar business, and we're in this to uh, like to, to make a lot of happy shareholders. And and uh, you know, I love this industry. We've uh, we're a group that really we built our business on 15 years of experience in the legacy market, and uh, we do that. That justice by you know developing IP around around this experience and really scaling it and and we think that uh, you don't have a lot of opportunities again to be in an industry uh, that's uh, you know has a massive global demand Absolutely. you know disruption opportunity and you know for us. Uh, Again, we're not looking for any exits. We're looking to, to build a billion dollar business. That's why we recently put a shareholder rights plan or a poison pill in, in place. We looked at you know some of these uh, hostile takeovers that we've seen over the last couple of years. We we expect that there's going to be some, some hostile takeovers in 2020. Yep. We think, especially as some of these big billion dollar companies are gonna need to uh, backfill some of their uh, some of their uh, market caps. So we think at the end of the day, you know, again, look at labs, look at balance. I mean, yep. these guys have, have, with that business model, focused on biomass to, to oil have uh, surpassed guys that had a two, three, four year head start. Absolutely. Profitability, revenue, and, and economics of running a great business. So we think that, uh, you know, obviously uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities uh, to do MA transactions. But, you know, for us, we're always, uh, we're always focused on, what, you know, what's in the best interest of the shareholders and how do we build a great company. Okay, great. Well, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you very much for being here today. For all of you guys that are watching, Next Lease Solutions, this is Paul, the CEO. Take a look at them. Symbol is oils. And thank you very much for your time today. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have yourself that. a great day. And thank you guys for watching.